Hey everybody, this is Chris here from Tiny Home Tours in the Off Grid Schoolie. Today we have Lacey and Brianne. They have the Van Life app that will be linked down below. Also, I mentioned before that we're actually in my schoolie. If you want to see a full build of my schoolie, it'll be right up here. It's about an eight minute video. It goes from me picking up the bus all the way up to where it is now. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week. Hi, I'm Lacey and this is Brie and we're the ladies van and we are at the Van Life App launch party gathering for three days. So we're just hanging out and meeting people and setting up camp for, for longer than we normally do. I'm going to give you a little tour of the inside of our van. This van took us about almost a year to fully design and build, mostly because we were building other people's vans. So we wanted to make sure this was perfect and we didn't run, want to rush it. So I'll start with the kitchen. This is basically everything we need to have our lifestyle on the road. So we have the full deep sink kitchen. We have a water heater, a 30 gallon fresh water tank under the van. The sink is actually a great size. We've had a smaller sink before and we prefer the larger sink because we can put dishes in it when we want to move or, or need to pack up quickly. We can put our dishes like in the sink and then drive off. It's also good for not splashing all over the place. We have a 30 gallon fresh water tank and that will last us about a week if we conserve. And that's our drinking water, that's our, our cooking water, our cleaning water, all of it. So about 30 gallons. We have a five gallon gray water tank under here, which we have to dump every few days generally, unless we're using a lot of water, then we'll have to dump it more regularly. But generally it lasts us a few days and then the fresh water tank will last us about a week. So we use this countertop for all of our builds. It's a walnut budger block. We don't put any polyurethane on it or anything like that. We actually just coat it in mineral oil that you can get at Ikea or any store really. You do have to oil it pretty regularly or else it gets dry, but the mineral oil is pretty nice. It, it gets a nice shine on it, helps you keep it clean. I really like cooking and I have all the cooking supplies that I need in this van, including my knives. And you can check them out over here, but what we do is we use sticky pads to keep them down so we can keep our knives out. We can keep our little things like this down because these sticky pads are here. They're when they're dirty like this, they're not sticky, but you can just wash them off and they'll be sticky again. And I can literally put this on here and it'll stay up when it's actually sticky. There's a few different brands that you can get, but this is called Vicoli and they're really convenient for van life. They stick really hard and then you can just pull them off and, and wash them to make things sticky again. We've had in our first van, we had real tile backsplash and it cracked a couple of the tiles cracked and when that happens you can't just like easily go replace it so this time around what we did was we used tic tac tiles uh, you can find them on amazon or through the manufacturer directly but they're textured stickers so it looks like real backsplash but it's not so it's perfect for a van we keep all of our kitchen stuff up here so our spices our tea all of that and then we have it's super messy right now, but we have our food and, and canned goods and things like that. All of our food really fits in here. And then we keep our dishes and other things on this side. We try not putting a locking mechanism on the uppers and it has worked out, fingers crossed, uh, most of the time, but I'm definitely gonna end up putting magnets on here. We do have magnets on the rest of our cabinets. Uh, they're like child safety magnets. So you can just basically, this is the key and you unlock it by putting it right here and it'll open. You can also keep it unlocked if you want. Um, so right now it's locked, right now it's unlocked and then I can just keep it unlocked if I want to. So these are super handy. The only annoying thing about them is you need the key in order to open any closet. So our restroom is down here and I couldn't find the key and it was locked with the magnet. I was like, had to hold it for a while. Our upper cabinets, this is really the only separator in here because I keep all my glass stuff in here um, and I want it to stay safe. So uh, from here down is actually completely open and we kept them open because we wanted to be able to fit our skis or snowboard in there. So it, we haven't put the skis or snowboard in them, but it has been handy for them to be open all the way down. And then underneath here, we have a little touch light that's separate from our normal dimmer. It can brighten by holding it 
and it's light out now so you won't really see the difference but it's just a tap that turns it on and off the rest of the kitchen stuff is actually on this side so i keep the food over here and then i keep all of the pots and pans and dishes over here so we have cups and plates and then down here we have pots and pans and you're probably wondering where the stove is the stove we keep right here i'm gonna mount it in here permanently but i wanted to test it out to see if i actually like the induction cooktop the induction cooktop is electric and at its highest temperature, it's about 1800 watts, which is quite a bit, um, but we have a 3000 watt inverter, so it feeds it. I am kind of hooked on fire for cooking, so I'm not sure I love this yet. So I'm not gonna install it until I know I love it, but it is handy, it heats up water super quickly. So for my coffee in the morning, I just pull out my coffee pot or my tea kettle and then do the pour over and everything is right here exactly where I need it. So we really put everything in a van. You have to be very conscious of the space and of the functionality. So we're putting, we put everything in a place where it's easily accessible, very um, functional. And then our plug is right here. If I got propane, I would put a permanent stove in my countertops. I don't like the removable thing because if I want to cook I don't want to have to pull it out and do that. So I like having a permanent range. Last van we had our propane inside the van uh, and we make sure to have the sensors and the alarms just in case there's any leak. But now that we have a business converting vans it's not really safe to have propane inside your van so we'll probably get an undermount propane tank. The last thing that we have here is the fridge and we you've used truck fridge. This is our second van and in our first one we had a truck fridge as well. The reason we like it is because it's side opening just like at home you have the side opening fridge. It is 12 volt and when it's closed it'll take it, it only takes about 48 amp hours a day to keep things cold. I know having a side opening fridge is not as efficient as far as energy is concerned, but this is one of the most energy efficient refrigerators you can get in a van. It has a little freezer up here, and then you can keep the temperature gauge at whatever you want, and it has a locking mechanism built in. So truck fridge actually hasn't become a huge thing in van life yet. I, I don't see many of them, which is strange because it's super affordable. It's probably one of the most affordable fridges you can get, and it's extremely energy efficient. I like the size of the refrigerator right now. Since we're not completely full time, we're about 50% in our van. We don't need a ton of stuff all the time. And if we do, it'll probably go bad if we're not in it for an extended amount of time. So I like this size fridge. I know a lot of full timers have a fridge about this size and it works for them. The only thing is you can't fit a ton of veggies in it. So if you eat a ton of vegetables uh, and you don't go shopping very often then you'll probably want a bigger fridge but for most people this size is pretty sufficient you can buy them them on amazon but truck fridge we order them directly through the manufacturer you can also order them through us if you want to so our refrigerator is powered by our in-house electrical system our electrical system is built with a 3000 watt renogy inverter 300 amp hour lithium batteries so I've been out here setting up for this event for the past week and I'm still full and I've been using my fridge, my water, I've been using everything in here. Plus I can charge all my devices and uh, we only have 200 amp hours of solar on the roof. So the lithium actually holds really well. The reason it holds so long though and we're very intentional about this is because our energy consumption is so low. We don't use very much energy at all. The lithium has better storage. We had AGMs in our first van and we killed them pretty fast. We had almost exactly the same equipment in here, but the lithium just lasts a lot longer and we can drain it all the way. I'm not very electrically inclined, so to have a battery that I know is gonna be okay instead of having to constantly monitor it makes my life feel 
easier. Uh, we, we do, not that we don't monitor our batteries because we have this monitor right here. It's a trimetric monitor system and we can read the amp hours, the percentage, the volts and all of that. So not that I know what any of that means. <laughs> uh, but lithium is definitely helpful because we can go off road without having to plug in and not have to rush to get back worried about draining our batteries. We really like the dinette bed setup because Brienne likes to cook and we like to entertain and have people over. So we can fit about eight people seated comfortably at this table, which is made for some really fun van life gatherings when it's raining, like playing games and things. We have a, um, a lagoon swivel table mount, so we can just swivel it on over and go in and out as we so desire or put in bicycles or something. It's just easier to get in and out with. So we really enjoy that aspect. The, it turns into the bed by taking off the table and then putting it down right here. And then we have two little boards and then just put the cushions down. So I'll show you real quick how the bed works. So unclip over here and then unclip this part, put that down. We have made extra boards so that we continue the bed and we don't actually just fall out of the bed or fall through the cushions. Then we take this cushion and this cushion there. And we decided to have a, a six foot bed and it was a good decision because <laughs> sometimes it five feet would work. Sometimes it's just nicer to have that extra foot because we can fit this way too. But I mean, only perfectly. It's almost exactly five <laughs> feet six across. So if you're five foot five, it's perfect for you. Um, but if you're taller than that, you, you'll have to sleep sideways, which is why we got a six foot bed because in case we ever decide to sell it, we'll have a six foot person more inclined to buy it. Also, we can fit more people in when it's a dinette. When we travel, we almost always work from our van. So we, every day we make our bed. It's also a kind of cool ritual, like, okay, wake up in the morning, make the bed, get it nice, have breakfast, have coffee, all of that. And then when we go to bed, we put it back down. We hardly ever keep it as a bed all the time. We make it pretty much every day. And it's also good because we have people in the van all the time. Like we are constantly having people over. So we can fit about 10 people in this van comfortably with Brie cooking and eight people sitting and then someone in the swivel chair over there. <laughs> Lagoon actually has a lot of products for boats, but it, a lot of boat products happen to be perfect for vans as well because they both move. So Lagoon, we got straight from lagoon.com or whatever they are. They're a company in the UK and they have a lot of products Marine like this. Teak. Marine Teak, that's it. So Lagoon Pedestal, um, Marine Teak is the company that sells it. We, like Brianne said, we made the storage up for the upper cabinets go all the way down so we could put long things in here. So here we keep our window covers. Uh, having this many windows sometimes gets pretty cold if you're in a cold spot. So we got these insulated window covers from Muha Creatives, which is a really cute family. Uh, two girls and a dad who started a company in, um, for van lifers. Um, so that's, those, those really help keep the insulation. And the windows came factory actually, because this was a passenger van with all the seats. So we got this van, even though we had to take out the airbags and the seats, we sold them pretty easily actually on Craigslist. Uh, so that we could have the windows full 360. And it's really nice to be able to be in at the same time as being out or see out at the same time as being in. Uh, we use Max Air Fans in our builds. Um, so it's really easy, you just press the on button and it opens up for you. And they have rain sensors too, so if it starts raining, they'll close, which some people like and some people oddly don't like. I don't get it but they like maybe it op they like it to stay open if it's raining. So if I, we actually have two Max Air fans in the van 
because it's such a long vehicle. And if we're cooking, we need we like to have it over there to and we turn it on and blow it out and so that kind of everything kind of goes out. Especially if you crack one of the windows, for example, then it'll pull air through um, and get a little cross piece going. If you put one out and one in, that kind of gives that circulation as well to keep the inside circulated if you don't want to keep the doors open because it's too windy or something. We put fabric along the the metal part of the van just because it made it kind of like have a nicer aesthetic and not so cold of metal, but we put uh, Velcro on different things that we want to hang on it. So when we're in bed and we don't even want to like get up, even though it's such a tiny space, <laughs> just grab it from right there. You can turn it on and turn it off. It's like a lazy fun thing. Back here, we keep more of our outdoor gear. So we have our blankets and towels and bug candle. And this is our buddy eater, buddy heater, which is good when you're in a cold spot. We're looking to put a Wobasto heater in, but we just haven't had the time. And this is just really an expensive alternative. <clears throat> this is where we keep our blankets for the nighttime. We have a heated blanket in there, which is actually one of my favorite parts because we have so many windows. The heated blanket that you just plug in was great for the winter and it worked well with our battery system too. Didn't blow any fuses. Takes a little bit, only a little bit of that word, voltage or watts or something. <laughs> Oftentimes we go to the beach and we like to watch the sunset. So we'll lay out the bed and keep the doors open, um, get the blankets out and just kind of like watch sunset until we fall asleep and then leave before 2 a.m. But when the sign says be out of there, so. The view back here with the windows is awesome. Uh, we framed the windows with reclaimed wood. It gave it a cool finishing touch and made it more a little outdoorsy and beautiful. We, our first van, we didn't have drawers. And now that we have them, I will never have a van again without drawers. It's such good storage space. So we have four drawers, two for each of us. Down here, the hits the wheel well. So it's kind of cool when you open the drawer, you, can, you only get half a drawer, but we made a little box that you can put things into just to, because you got to use every single little amount of space you can when you're in a small area. So the child safe locks work well with drawers, but we don't have them on here yet. So when we drive and we make a big turn, they go, whoop -um! We tried Velcro, doesn't work. So now we just got to put those locks in there to keep them shut. Otherwise it gets annoying. It does have a little bit of tension. So it doesn't open that often, just that one. I think that one's broken, but you go like this and you just go, the slow close mechanisms give them a lot of tension so that they don't open very easily. But this one is broken. So they, they break if you don't, you gotta get the child safe magnetic locks on there. Otherwise they'll just keep opening and closing and then they'll break on you. Down here, we keep a safe bolted to the floor of the van and we just put values in, valuables in there if we are in a place that we're gonna leave our van for a while. Over here, we keep shoes and then uh, like ski boots and ski stuff if we go skiing. So it's just an extra storage area. This is my favorite part of the van. It's our closet, drawer, toilet combo. So it is a closet, a drawer, and a toilet. So there's, we have all of our sweatshirts and jackets and some hate clothes that we wanna hang. Here we have electronics and camera equipment. And then this one, and then just using the magnetic key. And this is why when we're driving, so the doors don't fly open. And you just roll out the toilet. <clears throat> we use the Nature's Head composting toilet, and I love it to death. Uh, porta potties work great too, but this is nice because of the functionality of it and how easy it is and it can last you so long. You don't have to have a black water tank where you have to dump it and find a dump for it. This is just compost. It lasts for two people for about a month and the it sep you separate the solids from the liquids and so the liquids you just dump every into a toilet every time you see a toilet as much as possible. Don't overflow it. I haven't done it yet actually, which is pretty surprising. It's always plugged in and venting out of the van so it dries it out. And so after you go, you churn it, like maybe about 20, 25 times. It all gets mixed in there even more. And then the fan is always drying it out. So it just never, it never smells. We've never had an issue with it smelling. The worst story I've heard from a composting toilet is someone got um, flies, but then you just dump it out and then start over. Over here, we have a broom closet. So that's cool. The Ford Transit is curved both down this way and this way. 
So we didn't really know what to do with this space. So we just kind of made it into its own little broom closet, which is really nice for just extra storage, just throwing things in there. A shelf right above the door. I can't tell you how many times people multiple times in their life while they come in and out of this van will hit their head on this. Brianne just hit her head the other day. So we're going to take this down. Bad idea. Don't do it. But my favorite part of the van is the roof. So this we call the treetop and we get blankets and coffee and come up here for sunrises and sunsets. This is the beautiful gathering that we're at this weekend. You can see so much more from up here. It's crazy, just eight feet off the ground. Uh, the roof rack is built by Illumines, an aluminum company. Very, very cool company. They were van lifers and they retired and they started this, this company afterward, but very durable quality product and they customize it to where your vents are placed or your air conditioner if you have one. This is our Fiamma awning. It gives us outdoor shade. We got it right at the beginning of rainy season, so we haven't used it too often yet, but we went to RTR and we used it there. It's really nice when you're parked for a couple days or longer. This is our second van, like I said before, and it's also our second Ford Transit. We've tested all of the vans because we have a rental fleet. So we have a ProMaster, we have Nissans, we have Sprinters, and we choose the Ford Transit specifically because number one, it's gas. We can take it to a regular mechanic. And it's also the most comfortable drive for us personally. The ProMaster tends to hurt my back when I'm in it for long periods of time. This is like, it's the most similar drive to a car that you can find in the cargo vans. Um, so we really like it for that reason. It has a ton of cup holders, which is always a plus when you're on long road trips. And the gas mileage on it is not great. It's probably one of the worst of the cargo vans. It gets around, and when we first got it, it was a passenger van and it got about 15 miles to the gallon. Now it gets 13, 12 sometimes because of all the weight in it, but the roof rack in particular brought it down like two miles a gallon right away, almost immediately because of wind resistance. So if you get a roof rack and then, plus we have the solar panels further on top of it, I would recommend getting one of those like wind guards to help with your mileage. This transit is the extended. So it was a passenger van, which is why it has all the windows. And now we have, and we also have the extended EcoBoost Dually, so it's kind of like the cream of the crop for her, the Ford Transits. It is super fast. Like the pickup on this is amazing. Um, and then having the Duallys is nice because when we go to the snow, we put the all-terrain tires on um, and we can get through and not really have any issues. So like I said in the beginning, my name is Lacey and this is Brie. No, I'm just kidding. So thanks for checking out our van. It is definitely something that has brought a lot of joy to our life, as well as um, bringing a community of amazing people into our lives. Uh, we have been hosting events for van life, like van life meetups for the past year and a half, and we've met thousands of people on the road and um, van life and getting our first van and even our second van has just changed our lives completely. If you are curious about getting one of these or you're in the market, we have a company called SD Camper Vans, which where we specialize in affordability and luxury um, and quality vehicles. So our vans start from only $18,000, including everything you need. Um, our goal and our mission is to make van life more accessible to more people because it's been something that's really difficult for a lot of people to step into. So we started a company to make it more accessible to more people by providing a really quality build that feels like home for an affordable price. And we also run the Van Life app. And the Van Life app is basically the complete resource for Van Life. You want to connect with people, find the resources that you need on the road, everything you need right at your fingertips. Um, and that is launching right now. So go to vanlifeapp.com or go to the links below to download the app and subscribe for more events and stuff like that. <laughs>